So I thought maybe it would be a good idea to get into maybe why I quit WoW, my thoughts on the game in its current state, and if people are curious to hear about how I got into the game, my history with the game, and just all of my experiences throughout. Um, in terms of my history, I'll try to keep it down to some of the more important memories, but I'll start off with why I quit the game recently because I feel like people might be curious and other people might be able to relate to my frustrations with the game. So I did finally cancel my sub a month ago, but before that I was still having a lot of difficulty um, enjoying the game. I would spend upwards of 45 minutes, close to an hour, looking for Mythic Plus groups. The way it works is that there is a very small knit community for Mythic Plus. There is a whole Discord for Alliance and all of that. But the thing is, I feel like a lot of the players that I encountered that I wanted to do runs with or that I felt like I kind of was a little obligated to do runs with because there is not many people at a certain point. So I think my issue with Mythic Plus is partially my fault, as well as just the players themselves. Um, I feel like blaming it on the players is not necessarily what I'm trying to say, but um, I did encounter a lot of immature players, and my standards of people is very similar to how I handle things in real life. So if I had a negative experience with a player, I wouldn't want to ever run with them again. If they um, died a lot, I wouldn't want to play with them again because they are a handicap and in a run like Mythic Plus where deaths always matter and you want to be as efficient as possible, you can't always bring players that are weak at mechanics. So I would have like a long list of criteria where if someone would do something that I felt like could be detrimental if I brought them to future runs, I wouldn't play with them anymore. So gradually that list would grow, right? And that is part of the reason why I said that part of it is my fault. I'm very critical and the pool of players for Alliance Mythic Plus was already pretty small and there was a whole discord for it and everything. So there were always specific people that I just didn't want to play with because they were, like I mentioned, either immature or they had anger issues, or they just were very clicky. Um, a lot of players that did Mythic Plus Hardcore were very circle jerky in terms of their score. So they would have like their group of friends that they would run with and they would all jerk off to each other's score by saying like, you know, I'm so close to hitting 2600 or like, they would just do keys nonstop to buff their score. And the way that I approached Mythic Plus was that if there was a high key that I knew a friend had or that I had and I felt like it was doable with a very good group, I would always just want to do that high key. But the way that these other people work, they want to do the key they need. So if they ever ended up running with you, it would feel like they were kind of using you for your key. Um, I didn't like the whole score idea because I had a different way of judging someone's skill. Um, since I've been playing for a super long time, I don't focus on item level, I focus more on the experience. So for example, if players had um, a lot of empty scores for dungeons, as in that they didn't run it at all, that wouldn't bother me. But score-wise, that would be a big blow to their score because you add like 150 or something if you have a high key per dungeon. But what I would look for is I would look for somebody's highest done key on time. If it was done during a time where it was still rather challenging, then I would consider that player to be pretty good, or I mean, they would have to be. So for example, the season right before the current one, 7.2.5, um, I feel like a decent player would have done a 19 on time and I think the date would have to be around mid-July. That was what I would gauge it as. So I would use factors like that when looking up people to determine if I wanted to invite them or not. So having that critical prerequisite for players 
before I would invite them would make it take forever to start a group. But what I have always found is that when I kind of slacked off on those requirements because the group was taking forever to form just to get started, it would always fall apart because that player would mess up or do something or it would just not be done in time or it would just be a disaster. So I would end up spending so long making a group. They would take 30 minutes to an hour to make. And at that point, I don't think it was ever entirely enjoyable. They weren't always successful. And then there would always be those players that would join and say nothing. And I hated those players because if you're pushing a high key, you have to talk. There's no other choice. You have to talk. You have to communicate. Every single interrupt matters. Every single crowd control matters. Every single defensive cooldown matters. Calling that stuff out is very important. And that is where I feel like my competitiveness can kind of maybe be too hardcore where I put people on a blacklist or I get really disappointed if we don't do a key in time that I feel like is easily doable. So after months of playing like that, I just couldn't take it anymore because I would be excited though to be doing Mythic Plus, but then the reality was I would be sitting there for 30 minutes to an hour, occasionally looking somebody up on WoW Progress, and it would feel like such a waste of time. So I really wish it was not like that, but um, there are times where I do feel like maybe I should lower my requirements and just play with some of these people, but it's just... I, I think it's just my personality. I can't really do that. Um, sometimes these people would joke a ton or they would be kind of childish during a very high key run and they would just be talking nonstop. So you wouldn't even be able to coordinate if you wanted to. And it, I couldn't play with people like that. So that was a large reason why I quit WoW for now. Um, doesn't mean I'll quit forever, but I don't really see them implementing anything into the game as of now before the next expansion that could make me want to play again. I know there is another raid coming out, but I haven't been interested in raiding for a long time. The only way I would raid again is if it was 10-man mythic and I had a decent amount of friends I could raid with because, <laughs> like I said earlier, I handle WoW now the same way that I do in real life. So when I was raiding Mythic earlier this year, I was raiding, but I wasn't getting to know any of the guild members. So me showing up to raids felt like an obligation. And then I would just sit there, we would pull over and over again, and I would feel like emotionless, I would feel bored out of my mind. And I just didn't feel like I was making the best use of my time which is why I decided to stop reading. But yeah, so that is um, as in-depth as possible as I feel like I could get in a nutshell for why I canceled my account. Um, I think beta for Battle for Azeroth might be coming out. I don't really know how soon, but I am really hoping that I get into the beta for that. I have actually been considering whether I want to stay DPS or go heals for my priest if I play again because I have healed on my priest nearly 75% of her playtime and I actually did miss it a lot this expansion when I went DPS because I really do enjoy healing but Holy is really bad right now compared to Resto Druids. And the main reason I'm comparing the two is because I had the characters. So I would be playing Holy and I feel I felt like I would be healing really well on trash or on boss fights, but I would just be out of mana so quickly. And then I play my druid a couple months later and I would be pumping out heals and it would feel really intense and I'd be like, damn, I just spent so many globals or a ton of cooldowns, I did so much, and hey, I still have like 50% of my mana. So that was kind of the point when I was able to realize that, yeah, I'm not playing wholly incorrectly. It's just a class imbalance. So I think it depends on what it will be like. I do have to admit that playing Shadow this expansion was a lot of fun for me. Uh, they did design it pretty well, although I feel like it would be nice to maybe have more cooldowns. I'm not sure about that though, because 
when you talk to people who play other classes, they're like, oh, we have to coordinate all these cooldowns and all of that. And all I have to press is Mindbender. So um, I'm not really sure, but uh, I am really curious to see when they release class changes for the next expansion. Although like it's really complicated because if you can choose between like playing their classic option or the expansion, I feel like I would choose classic and I don't know how that works. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I think about the game currently. I'm going to not talk more about Mythic Plus because I feel like what I said earlier pretty much sums up what I think about it entirely. Um, another thing though that I did want to mention is that there are certain aspects of Mythic Plus that I don't like that I feel like they could have fixed a long time ago, but I don't know if it's whether they want to put all their manpower into developing new things, but aspects like quaking still going off out of combat, I really don't think that was the intent of that ethics, but having that happen was really frustrating. And there were so many things about Mythic Plus that were annoying, like little tidbits like that, that they never ended up fixing. And maybe it's not a bug, which is why they didn't fix it, but there were also a lot of bugs early on in the game that lasted for six months. So one of the early ones was when you had the legendary belt for Shadow Priest, there would be times where the game wouldn't register that you had a second charge of Mind Blast. And I didn't know it was a bug at the time, so I was like getting really frustrated because I would be pressing my Mind Blast button and it would show that the game registered you pressing the button because it would show the GCD thing kind of glowing or flashing or whatever, but then it would just not go off. So I experienced that for a really long time and it made me dislike using that legendary even though it was really powerful in the beginning. I was actually really lucky in the beginning of Legion because the shoulders and belt were the best two legendaries at the time and I got them as my first two and I also got them within 24 hours of each other which I always found pretty comical in the beginning because I was one of the last people between my friends to get a legendary probably because I didn't farm as much but I ended up getting my best two and I got them very quickly. So I'd say my current complaints about the game is based on my preferences and I guess that makes sense because everyone's different. But I have been extremely turned off from the following for a while. Leveling, aka questing, um, and doing any sort of farming. So I know it's an MMO and you have to farm somewhat, but I always considered the farming aspect to be leveling. So when I think of leveling, I think of torture. And that was why it took me forever to level my druid because I actually love my druid. My druid was really close to dethroning my priest as my favorite class to play in terms of PvP back then because rest of druids are really fun to play and they were also kind of overpowered. But um, yeah, so I didn't level her for the longest time, plus the artifact thing really dissuaded me. So what I didn't like is that they made it seem like world quests was something new, but it's basically dailies just spread out. Um, I really kind of wish that they figured out other ways to keep players busy aside from these grinding things. And I pretty much reached the point where I was like, I don't like grinding, I don't like farming, I'm not going to do any of that. So for most of Legion, I ended up struggling with gold, I was always poor, I had like less than a thousand gold at times. And then I would just be really struggling and once you start being really serious about Mythic Plus, it gets expensive because you use prolonged pots like crazy, you use flasks all the time and it just really adds up, you use a lot if you're constantly doing runs. So I was always really dry on money, and since I wasn't doing world quests, I didn't really have a good way of doing income. And then also the stupid order hall requires resources for you to do missions, so if I'm not farming world quests, I don't have resources to spend. Um, I honestly thought the order hall is on, it's really similar to the garrison, right? And I don't like the whole mission thing because in the beginning, it feels like it's nice. Oh, hey, I might do a mission. I might get a free piece of loot. I might get some gold. And then 
later on as the expansion progresses, it just becomes like a complete waste. I completely ditched doing missions for the past several months and I don't really like that aspect of the game. Um, another thing, a big one. So I think a lot of Legion I didn't like. The only reason I kept playing was because of Mythic Plus. So if Mythic Plus didn't exist, I would probably have quit maybe a couple months after the game or when I got tired of raiding. But Artifact Weapons I thought was the dumbest concept ever. So in the beginning, Artifact Power was really important because there were a lot of traits that you needed to get to be competitive in raiding. And in order to get that, you had to farm a lot of Mythic Plus. So that in itself already is another form of farming that is really ridiculous because I remember there were people in my guild that would be running Mythic Plus for four to five hours a day. And they would be running stuff like Moth Souls because it was shortest. And can you imagine doing the same dungeon over and over and over like that? Speed running through it? That's mind numbing. I never decided to do something like that. But aside from that though, Artifact Power made it so that you were extremely discouraged from playing an off spec. And even though you could put Artifact Power in an off spec, then that would feel like you're gimping your main spec. Um, my mentality is that if there is any sort of disadvantage for me to play an off spec, then I would feel not so excited about doing it because I would feel kind of gimped. And having that feeling just made me not really want to play it at all. So even though at times I really wanted to heal high keys as holy, I was discouraged because I didn't have as many artifact traits and some of them were pretty important. Plus they gave you stamina, so I would have less health and it would be not so great on tyrannical weeks. But yeah, I don't, I think that in itself, not really allowing you to switch specs as easily was a poor design. Plus, if they ended up nerfing a spec, some people had to re-level a separate spec because now maybe Arcane or Frost was stronger and now Fire is worthless. And it's aspects like that where I am completely shocked that they did not think of these aspects ahead of time while they're designing a concept like this. But yeah, not a fan of artifact weapons at all. Um, and lastly, I do think the idea of giving everybody legendaries is not so good. Um, I never actually got too much into the hype of legendaries though because when they were really cool, it was when I was unable to raid. So stuff like four days or the bow off kill Jaden, I think. And then um, Thunder Fury, stuff like that. Those felt very like special. I don't even know of a better word right now, but now that everybody has them, it's just, I don't like it. <laughs> and plus, Legendary made it so that you had to, again, farm old bosses just to obtain a new one. Um, I didn't really like how you couldn't feel competitive with the spec until you got the right legendaries. That is really bad, I think, because for someone that is competitive like me, you would feel like shit playing your class the entire time until you got the right legendaries then when you're finally doing competitive dps that is when you start enjoying the game but just because your rng is not as good as somebody else's should not mean that you can't put out competitive dps um i feel like they i i think based on what i read they are continuing with something like that where the legendaries are being freely distributed so I'm not really sure about what I've read so far about the new expansion, but the whole idea of the whole idea of having six new races to play, um, I don't really know how I feel about that. I feel like for some reason, every time they introduce new classes or new races, I was always feeling kind of eh about it because I just remember when I played vanilla and BC, I had a lot of fun and. Although BC, I think at most they introduced new class combinations, like Shamans were be able to be played on Alliance and Paladin for vice versa. And I still really enjoyed the game. 
And then the second DKs came in Wrath of the Lich King in the beginning, they kind of broke the game because they were really overpowered. So I'm not really the most welcoming to new stuff like that, but of course it's an expansion, they have to release new content. But the thing is, when I was browsing through their website, a lot of what they put out there does not seem very new to me. Um, so for example, stuff like that 20 player, I don't know what it would be considered if it's a battleground or if it's just like a Altaric Valley kind of thing, but that doesn't really excite me whatsoever because I like doing stuff with friends, I think, even though I don't think I have many that play anymore, but I don't know if doing something like that would still be more fun with friends. Um, and then they have a three-player co-op. That sounds to me like scenarios, which was a huge flop a couple expansions back, so I don't really know if I'm too thrilled about that one. And then they would say how like, they would kind of write it where, oh, there's a new island being released and here's all a bunch of stuff you can do on it. And none of that interests me. So I think that I, I feel bad saying all of this in case anybody is still very excited for the game. But I think it's mainly because I've been playing this game for 10 years, not consistently, but I am very critical of the game now. Actually, I think the last time I played was seriously was Cataclysm, roughly. And I actually felt like after that, when I stopped, I would never play the game again because I feel like it would never be as good as it was. And it really won't ever, I think, because I think based on the way they are making changes, it just like, I think a lot of what they released in Legion was very shocking. So, um, not particularly excited about the expansion. Classic, however, I am very excited for because the reason the game was so good back then was because it had a sense of community. And that is very surprising for somebody like me who doesn't care about humans, right? But maybe back then, 10 years ago, when I was a uh, younger self, innocent, naive and meeting all these people online and having so much fun playing a video game um i was on a server that was called burning legion and i just knew everyone or like as i kept playing and as i started playing pvp and doing better and stuff like that i started getting to know people on my server and that aspect surprisingly contributes a lot to your fun factor at least i think it did for me so let me just start from the beginning. Okay, so I originally got into the game because for some reason I was playing Diablo 2 and I was farming Mephisto and I was map hacking, so I got my account banned. And then after that, I was scouring the internet trying to find another game to play. And the trailer, the cinematic trailer for World of Warcraft, the original one, I fell in love with that trailer. I remember I would watch that trailer and I would be like, wow, this is so amazing. And even to this day, I still think that trailer is so well made. Blizzard is really good at making cinematics, but for some reason I had the wrong idea of the game where I imagined the game would look like the trailer. So when I actually got in game, I was very surprised and I had a very crappy computer at the time. so. All of that was a little distorted, but um, I started off as a hunter. Unfortunately, my choice for that was because I'm a girl, I like pets and I wanted pets, so I played a hunter, Night Elf. Um, I tamed the cats from Darkshore. I think that was the cat that was supposedly the one that did the most DPS. So yeah, back then there are all these different pets that had different benefits to them. And now I don't know what the hell they did to hunters, but I don't recognize the class anymore. And it makes me sad because that was the first class that I hit 70 with when Burning Crusade was just coming out. I was just below 60, somewhere in 55 or something. And I was still a complete noob. And to actually get that across, I never knew about keybinding until a couple months into 70 as my hunter and I met someone that introduced me to them. So before that I was clicking like a madman and um, I actually think it was a dungeon run in Mechanar 
for some reason I probably saw a priest in our group and I was like wow their armor looks really nice and then I made a priest and then she became my main forever um, I was unable to raid at the time because my parents were restricting me um, that always made me very sad at that time because those raids seemed very exciting and I still always regret missing out on them but yeah I was unable to raid so the only other thing that I could do end game was do PvP so it was season 2 I was wearing primal mooncloth gear and I was playing with whoever I could play with. I would be spamming trade, looking for a rogue, because at the time, Priest Rogue was a very strong comp. And I can't even remember how long it took for me to keep doing all this, but I also spent a lot of time watching PvP videos, um, which is where I started enjoying metal music for a lot of my high school years and college years, Main, mainly like Swedish death metal and stuff like that. Um, I do still occasionally try to listen to it, but nowadays I think I, for some reason, like to listen to rap and hip hop. But yeah, so maybe some time after I was doing all of that, I met a frost mage through trade who did a lot of raiding, um, and we just started playing a lot together. But for some reason, I was still stuck on really wanting to play priest rogue, and I was like, priest mage, nobody plays that. That's not gonna work. So I would always do games with him, but then I would leave the team and play with somebody else, hoping that that would be my partner. But then eventually, I think I just caved, and I kept playing with him. And we really started doing well. Um, I kind of wish that I was able to record games from back then more, because those were the best years of WoW for me when I was doing PvP. Um, it was competitive, there was a lot of communication going on between the team, and, you know, you were pushing to make Gladiator, and that felt very exciting for me, even though at times it could be very stressful. So, my first season getting Gladiator was season 4, which is the Brutal Nether Drake, which is the one that I use all the time, because it brings back a lot of memories for me. And I felt like we played Priest Frost Mage before everyone started picking up on it. Um, and it was a really fun spec to play, and I remember facing off against people on our server. During that time, as I gradually got better at PvP, and once I finally got Gladiator, I feel like people started to kind of recognize me on the server. Um, unfortunately, I'm sure that plenty of people thought that I got carried to my title. But what I'm mainly trying to say is that there was a sense of community on my server, so I just knew like a bunch of different people. I knew them by name, I knew them by guild. They were a raider, they were a PvPer that would ask me questions, just stuff like that. You just knew people. People would be outside dueling in Iron Forge, they would be dueling inside Iron Forge under the stairs, and there were just all these things wall hopping. Um, and it just felt very nice and close knit. And I even have screenshots of like, my whole friends list being full and everybody's doing something, it's all active. And then gradually it started to die because they started implementing faction change and realm change. And I think that completely destroyed any sense of community because people can just hop around whenever they want and then you don't even know where they went. They just disappeared off your friends list and then you have no way to contact them again. So that was always really sad to me because currently I think that Burning Legion is a really really dead server. It's part of one of the merged servers and it's just a really dead server to play on. If you raid there you have no pool of good players really and it's unfortunate that it has gotten to that point. But yeah so after BC I did play Wrath of course because it was during a time where I absolutely loved the game and couldn't wait to play more. So early Wrath, I still couldn't raid because I was still living at home. So I did do more PvP. I think season five, I chose not to PvP because death knights were ridiculous and I don't think priests were in a good place at the beginning. There, there would be stuff like death and decay was a really, really large 
uh, circumference and then you would be slowed to oblivion while you're in there and then even while you're out of it you could sometimes still be slowed for a short period while exiting i think there was also an aspect where you could be rooted while you're inside it but anyways they were just they were crazy they were strong and they made priests pretty miserable to play i think they just ate priests alive i don't know if necrotic strike or disease or whatever it was was active at the time but it's the one where it applies a debuff to you which makes your healing absorb so they would just stick on your ass apply that and you would be snared forever and then you, your partner would have trouble peeling them off you stuff like that so playing a priest wasn't very fun which is maybe why i didn't play season five or maybe i just sucked season five who knows i don't remember <laughs> but i did remember getting um gladiator six seven and eight i have those drakes i just don't use them because they are ugly they are um, worm frost worm drakes except they don't have the armor on them so the raiders for their achievements, they got Frostworm Drakes with armor on the head, but the Gladiator Drakes are just really ugly. There was even a purple one that I think of that looks like Barney, but I never use them because they look terrible, so I just use my Brutal Nether Drake, and once in a while, when I was still playing, people would compliment me on the Drake, or they would just recognize it, and it would make me happy that people just knew what it was or played during that time. Some people actually didn't even know what it was, so they needed to ask me where it was from. But yeah, I think after that point, after I started stopped, after I stopped PvPing, and then I did get into raiding a little bit during that time. Um, I think I did enjoy it. Ice Crown Citadel was pretty fun for me. I played a lot of alts during that time, so I was always running it with a bunch of people and just swapping characters. But um, I think after that point on, it did start going downhill for me. I didn't play the next expansion very long. I did, however, end up raiding on my druid as balance with a 10-man guild on the server for a period of time. And they were actually pretty good, so I do recall enjoying raiding with them. But then after that, I was very mm, not consistent in playing the game. I would play a new expansion for maybe a month or two and then quit because there's nothing to do. Um, I did rate a little bit in Cataclysm with my friend Shane here in San Diego who asked me to raid with him uh, on Horde. That was the only time I raided as Shadow actually and I don't even remember anything about Shadow during that time very well but I don't remember raiding with him for very long so that was the very last time I played until now for Legion. So. Yeah, it has been very sporadic since Wrath of the Lich King. Um, so I don't have the most hope for upcoming expansions and whatnot, but I do think that I love the MMO genre. I really like playing a character and making them powerful and just focusing on one thing. I've always kind of liked just focusing on one thing. So stuff like MOBAs can be hard to get into for other people. I guess I kind of lucked into getting into it, and I think Dota 2 is kind of the only thing that I play right now, but um, yeah, I mean, for a while right now, there are times often where I kind of wish that the game would give me something to do, because I like playing my priest in a competitive environment, and it's it sucks to feel like there's no motivation for the game.